Once upon a time, the Norse gods Odin and Loki started on a journey. They had often travelled together before on all sorts of errands, for they had a great many things to look after, and more than once they had fallen into trouble through the prying, meddlesome, malicious spirit of Loki, who was never so happy as when he was doing wrong. When the gods went on a journey, they travelled fast and hard, for they were strong, active spirits who loved nothing so much as hard work, hard blows, storm, peril and struggle. There were no roads through the country over which they made their way, only high mountains to be climbed by rocky paths, deep valleys into which the sun hardly looked during half the year, and swift rushing streams, cold as ice and treacherous to the surest foot and the strongest arm. Not a bird flew through the air, not an animal sprang through the trees. It was as still as a desert. The gods walked on and on, getting more tired and hungry at every step. Even Odin was beginning to feel the pangs of hunger, like the most ordinary mortal. When suddenly, entering a little valley, the famished gods came upon a herd of cattle. It was the work of a minute to kill a great ox and to have him swinging in a huge pot over a roaring fire. But never were gods so unlucky before. In spite of their hunger, the pot would not boil. Every time the cover was lifted, there was the meat, just as raw as when it was put in. As they were talking about this, and wondering how it could be, a voice called out from the branches of the oak overhead, If you will give me my fill, I'll make the pot boil. The gods first looked at each other, and then into the tree, and there they discovered a great eagle. They were glad enough to get their supper on almost any terms, so they told the eagle he might have what he wanted if he would only get the meat cooked. bird was as good as his word, and in less time than it takes to tell it, supper was ready. Then the eagle flew down and picked out a pretty large share. Loki, who was always angry when anybody got more than he, no sooner saw what the eagle had taken than he seized a great pole and began to beat the rapacious bird unmercifully. Then a very singular thing happened. The pole stuck fast in the huge talons of the eagle on one end and Loki stuck fast at the other end. Struggle as he might, he could not get loose and as the great bird sailed away over the tops of the trees, Loki went pounding along on the ground, striking against rocks and branches until he was bruised half to death. He 
was not to get away until he had promised to pay roundly for his freedom. If there was one thing which the gods prized above all the other treasures in Asgard, it was the beautiful apples of Idun, kept by the goddess in a golden casket and given to the gods to keep them forever young and fair. Without these apples, all their power could not have kept them from getting old. The giant eagle told Loki that he could not go unless he would promise to bring him the apples of Idun. Loki was bruised and sore but the power which he possessed lay not so much in his own strength. He had a smooth way of deceiving people. Loki came carelessly up to Idun as she was gathering her apples to put them away in the beautiful golden box. Good morning, goddess, he said. How fair and golden your apples are! Yes, answered Idun, the bloom of youth keeps them always beautiful. I never saw anything like them, continued Loki slowly, until the other day. Idun looked up at once with the greatest interest and curiosity in her face. She was very proud of her apples and she knew no earthly trees, however large and fair, bore the immortal fruit. Where have you seen any apples like them? asked she. Oh, just outside the gates, said Loki indifferently. If you care to see them, I'll take you there. It will keep you but a moment. The tree is only a little way off. Idun was anxious to go at once. Better take your apples with you to compare them with the others, said the wily god as Idun prepared to go. She gathered up the golden apples and went out of Asgard, carrying with her all that made it heaven. No sooner was she beyond the gates than a mighty rushing sound was heard, like the coming of a tempest, and before she could think or act, the giant eagle was bearing her swiftly away through the air to his desolate icy home, where he kept her as a lonely prisoner. Loki, after keeping his promise and delivering Idun into the hands of the giant eagle, strayed back into Asgard, as if nothing had happened. The next morning, when the gods assembled for their feast, there was no Idun. Day after day went past, and still the beautiful goddess did not come. Little by little, the light of youth and beauty faded from the homes of the gods, as they themselves became old and haggard. Their strong young faces were lined with care and furrowed by age. 
Their raven locks passed from grey to white, and their flashing eyes became dim and hollow. Finally, the gods could bear the loss of power and joy no longer. They found out what Loki had done and seized him. When he read in their haggard faces the deadly hate which flamed in all their hearts against his treachery, his courage failed, and he promised to bring Idun back to Asgard. He disguised himself as a falcon, and with eager gaze the gods watched him as he flew away, becoming at last only a dark moving speck against the sky. After a long and weary flight, Loki finally came to the dreary house of the eagle and was glad to find Idun alone. He changed her instantly into a tiny nut and taking her thus disguised in his talons, flew away as fast as his falcon wings could carry him. And he needed all of his speed, for the giant eagle, coming suddenly home and finding Idun and her precious fruit gone, flew forth in a mighty rage with vengeance in his heart. When he saw the falcon far ahead, his flight became like a flash of lightning. The haggard faces of the gods lined the walls of Asgard and watched the race with tremulous eagerness. Loki made desperate efforts to widen the distance between them. Little by little, the eagle gained on the falcon. The gods grew white with fear. They rushed off and prepared great fires upon the walls. With fainting, drooping wing, the falcon passed over and dropped exhausted by the wall. In an instant, the fires were lighted and the great flames roared to heaven. The eagle swept across the fiery line a second too late and fell to the ground to his death. Idun resumed her natural form, and the gods crowded around her. She spread the feast, the golden apples gleaming with unspeakable luster in the eyes of the gods. They ate, and once more their faces glowed with the beauty of immortal youth, their eyes flashed with the radiance of divine power. <laughs> <laughs>